Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this week's Friday Reads where I talk about everything that I read in the last week, what I am currently in the middle of, and what I think I'm going to be getting to next week. And I actually have a number of things that I finished or DNF'd in the last week. So we are going to start with the one thing that I DNF'd and that is Acting on Impulse by Mia Sosa. So this is an adult contemporary romance and um, we're basically following our two leads and I don't remember their names because I DNF'd it very quickly, but essentially our male lead is an actor and he is just coming off of his last role. And so he's kind of like looking a little scraggly because of it, but he's on a plane to go to Aruba um, and insert our female lead. And she is a personal trainer who is running away from some interesting press when her boyfriend publicly breaks up with her without like consulting her first. And so she is also on her way to Aruba. And when they get there, he decides to ask her to be his personal trainer to help him book up for his next role. And the story goes from there. And this was a very, very quick DNF. Actually, it was really funny because like last week I filmed my, um, Friday reads. And then as I was waiting for it to, um, upload to my computer, I was just like, I'll just take a look and read the first couple of pages. And within that first couple of pages, I was like, Oh no, Oh no, (laughs) this is not going well. Um, we actually start in the male leads head and I just hated his voice. And I just really did not appreciate the fact that he was like immediately, like I saw this woman and I knew I was going to marry her. I like that's I always struggle a little with that level of dramatics but also like what he's describing is like how he's attracted to her body for the most part and then like and then he sees her interacting with people and she, he's like oh she is really nice but like I'm I'm like I'm okay with lust at first sight I really got it but like to say lust at first sight and then say I'm going to marry her I'm just like that just rubs me the wrong way personally. And I did read from her perspective too. Like the next chapter is from her perspective. So I did read both, both perspectives just to make sure. And I didn't think it was bad, but I didn't think it quite was compelling enough to make up for the fact that I'm going to be in the head of this really dramatic dude. (laughs) So I went ahead and just DNF this at page 20. That does mean that is two books that I have tried from Mia Sosa, both of which I have DNF'd, so I just don't think she is the writer for me. And then I picked up a surprise thing, and that is The Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. And this is actually a kid's graphic novel, and it's it's very short and very sweet, and it's essentially about this society, like this community like it's a fantasy. So in, within this, in this world, there are these little dragons that are domesticated that are reliant upon people for their upkeep, but they do grow like tea leaves on like their horns, I believe. And if you're a person taking care of a tea dragon, then you can actually harvest these tea leaves and drink it. And it has some magical properties. And we're following a young girl who has kind of like, um, has, started to learn more about being a, um, a person who's looking after a tea dragon. And so it's, it's very short, it's very sweet. And it's just, I don't know, it's just adorable. It's just kind of like warm fuzzies. It's just very nice. Um, there are like two more books in this series that I am definitely going to get to. I'm like going to read them when I need something very like wholesome and sweet, maybe pretty soon. I don't know. Like I want to get to it soon, but also like I kind of want to save them for when I need them. So we'll see how long it takes me to get to them. But like, I really, really enjoyed it. And I ended up giving it four stars. And then I also finished Groundbreaking Food Gardens by Nikki Jabor, and this is a, no- a nonfiction. It's it's um, 73 plans that will change the way you grow your garden. And it really is a book that has, like, various ideas for how to, like, set up a garden, like, dependent on what you want to do. So there you go. It, it's literally plans, right? And, like, how various people have gone about setting up a garden. Um And I, overall, I liked this. I think it has some really interesting information. I did find it to be really repetitive within, like, 
a lot of things. And of course, some of the plans, they're like, I'm like, I'm not going to do like, you know, a one acre plot. So like some of these things are not necessarily applicable, but I did think a lot of them were really interesting. There's one that I'm going to be looking into even further because it's um basically a hedge made out of berry bushes and a plan to do that. And I'm like, well, but maybe I should do that. Um, Anyway, so it's given me some good ideas, which is really all I was looking for, but I did find it to be a little repetitive and some of the stuff I think maybe went over my head because I'm just not very good at gardening. And so I'm not really sure if this is beginner friendly or it's more intermediate or what, um, but I went into it not expecting, I, I went into it expecting more to be inspired to do what I want rather than to have an actual plan that I would end up following. So with with that uh, scale in mind, I thought it did a pretty good job. Um, but because it did get repetitive, like I ended up giving this like a three and a half stars because, um, yeah, the repetition was not great. But I it did what I wanted it to do, so I'm very happy with that. And then I also finished Late Eclipses by Shauna McGuire, the fourth book in the Toby Day series. So the Toby Day series is an adult urban fantasy series, and we're following our main character of October Day, who is a half a half human knight in the fairy courts who ends up solving a lot of really weird problems because like she just kind of has the skill set to solve those really weird problems. Um, and in this book, there are multiple people around Toby that are being attacked and, and, or falling ill and Toby need, and also Toby, uh, suspects that there is a, an old enemy making a reappearance. And so she has to figure out what is going on before anybody dies. And the story kind of goes from there. Um, and I really love this book. This is like the, this is one of my favorite books in the series simply because this is a turning point for the series. Like for me, when I talk about, talk to people about starting this series, it's like, I, I tell them that the first book is like a dumpster fire for a lot of reasons. You just have to push through and you have to read it because it builds so much of the world building it built so much of the world that you kind of need to read it. So the second book is a step up, but it's still a little rough. The third book is also a step up, but in some ways it feels very rough because of the emotional hit to it. And then in this book, this is where a lot of the things start clicking into place where you're like, oh, it wasn't just a bunch of random nonsense that was put in like you sometimes get with urban fantasies. It was all very deliberate. And like, so the world kind of clicks into place and some of the stuff about Toby clicks into place and you can see, okay, so if everything else was everything, uh, there's so much that was deliberate. I kind of have to assume that most, if not all things are deliberate, which means we're going to get some more reveals later on in the series. And so this is like the book to get to. And I really, really enjoyed it. And it was very interesting to read this again, having read all the books in the series already to come back to this one and pick up more of the little um, tidbits that that are meaningful is very, very interesting. So I had a really good time with this book and I ended up giving it four and a half stars. So that is everything that I read and the one thing that I DNF'd. And so right now I am currently in the middle of Marked in Flesh by Anne Bishop. And so this is the fourth book in the other series, which is an adult urban fantasy series as well. But in this one, we it posits a world where there, there was a species that came before humans and it's called the Terra Indigene or the the earth natives. And we kind of know them as predominantly shifters. And so in the U S or they call it something differently, but essentially what is the U S um, the Terra Indigene, the earth natives were there first. And so all the humans that live there are kind of like leasing the land from the earth natives. And so if they mess up, they can be kicked out of the land. Um, enter our main character of Meg Corbin, who is a blood prophet. Essentially, you cut her skin and she sees prophecy. 
So many, many content warnings for cutting. But in this book, I can't really talk too much because like, mm, it's all like interconnected. But basically in the first book, Meg went on the run from the people who kind of owned her and were like cutting her skin against her will to sell the prophecies to the highest bidder, sort of. And so um, that's where this story starts. But where this book is, like, I can't really honestly give any information that would not spoil the, the previous three books. But this is also a reread. I love this series. This is going really well. I just, I think my, the first book is my favorite, but I also just adore these like later books because you get, again, you get to see the payoff from things that we have been building for this entire time. And so, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I am going a little bit slowly through this book because well, okay. So we're going to talk about this. So likely what I, as, as I'm looking at what I'm going to be reading next week, I'm not actually going to pick all that many books that I think I'm going to get to. Basically it's going to be marked in flesh. And then I'm going to try to start and hopefully finish station 11 by Emily St. John Mendel. Mostly that because like it's a library book, um, that was my hold came in um, a little bit unexpectedly. Like I thought I was going to have a couple more weeks before it came in, but there's so many people on the wait list for this that I can't renew it. So I have to get to it soon if I'm going to read it. Um, but like, that's probably all I'm going to read next week because I'm, my reading is starting to slow down and that's predominantly because we're getting into the warmer months. I am going outside and doing more, um, things outside. Like I have started my annual battle against the dandelions. So that's going strong. Um, I have already planted my garden, but that means that there is some work that goes into that. Although not much because I try to choose things that are not super work intensive. Um, and then just generally kind of figuring out what we're doing with our yard. So it's less work, less water kind of thing. And then also like just doing other things. I think that's kind of the thing is I'm, I'm starting to get into the mode of like, I've been doing a lot of reading and now I kind of want to do other things. And so I still enjoy reading. I'm still going to read, but you may see that my reading slows down quite a bit in the future. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but kind of just a heads up. But the last thing that I wanted to do is that I, I had some books come in. I had a pre-order come in and I had a book order that has come in. So I figured I'd show off my new books. So first up, my pre-order, and that is Seasonal Fears by Shauna McGuire. This is the companion novel to Middle Game. So I'm, I'm excited to get to it, although there have been very, very mixed reviews on this. And I think that... I, I have some suspicions about what's going on with the mixed reviews, although I don't know for sure. I have to, I have to read seasonal fears first to figure out if I'm correct, but, um, very mixed feelings from a lot of people. So we'll see how that goes. But, um, and then I did my last book order. So every year I kind of do, um, the one book last book order before like my birthday, which is a little, still a little ways away, but I try not to get too close to it. Um, and so that came in as well. So first up, I have the next two books in the Memoirs of Lady Trent series, which is The Tropic of Serpents and Voyage of the Basilisk. These are by Marie Brennan. And then I picked up two more Alona Andrews books. First is Small Magics, and this is actually a short story collection. And it's not only the in the Kate Daniels series, but it is predominantly Kate Daniels shorts. And then I also got the Kinsman Universe, which is also a short story collection. But I don't, it's in the Kinsman Universe, but I don't remember what that is. But I will end up reading it. And I assume I'm going to enjoy it because I really do love Alona Andrews. And then the last thing that I got in my book order is Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. This is kind of, it, 
this is the book series that appears in Middle Game. Like, this is, like, the kids series that is so closely tied into Middle Game. And so I wanted to, um, I wanted to read it and just see how it goes. But that is it. Those are all the things that I have read, what I'm in the middle of, what the very few things that I think I might get to next week, and then also the new books that have appeared in my house. So if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of the books that I have mentioned in this video, please leave me a comment down below, or you can always let me know what you are in the middle of. But that is all I have for this video. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and until next time, have happy reading, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!